Okay, I'm Susie King, psychotherapeutic counsellor mm -hmm. and founder of Platonic Partners. Dot org. Um, I was having a relationship with somebody mm -hmm. who became impotent and unfortunately this depressed him a lot and he tried to commit suicide. And I was in Addenbrooke's hospital here by his bedside and he was mumbling in his sleep um, saying, oh nobody will love me, nobody will love me. And although we'd split up by then, mm. it, it just occurred to me that there must be more people in the world who, who can't or won't or don't want to have sex. And where would they go to meet someone else? Because we can't walk along, you know, with something on our foreheads. Um, so I went home, got onto Google, and there was nothing. This was in, I think it was 2005, something like that. And so I mentioned it to a friend of mine, a, a guy who can't have sex because he's had surgery. So it's destroyed the, the nerves. And he got out his checkbook, wrote up a cheque for £5,000. I put the same amount in and off it went. It just, it happened. It was amazing. Um, next steps one, I researched it for six months. I researched the subject for six months all over the world, you know, at all sorts of government bodies, NHS bodies. And it, it, it transpired that in the UK alone, at any one time, there's about five million people who are not sexually active. And we're talking adults here. And that's broken down into illness, spirituality, medication. And as I was researching that, I came across this category of people called asexuals. 1% of the population is asexual across the board, across the world. So I thought, yeah, you know, if I'm looking at 5 million people at any one time in the UK, this might work. Well, we're now worldwide. The only place we haven't gone to yet is Russia, I think. It comes to in terms of you a member in that country? Yes, um, we started off just UK yeah. and now we're Europe, North America, South America, India, haven't come to Africa yet, mm -hmm. or Russia. Mm -hmm. We're in Australia, New Zealand, India as I said, uh, South Africa and growing. And do you think people have found you just because you know they, they, they've had a kind of question and they've just googled it like you did? Well, if, I think if they, uh, as it came more out into the media, mm. um, people realised that celibate dating was okay, it was okay to be platonic or whatever you want to call it. And asexuality at the same time was being put out by Avon, the visibility network that yeah. you mentioned. And I think people started googling more and started looking for places mm. where they could connect with other people like that. No, um, we, did, we, we were going to try that at the beginning um, and we had a lot of really nasty stuff being put on it by people who yeah, thought that in. asexuality or celibacy was weird. Yeah. So we had a whole load of downloading stuff of porn and all sorts of really, you know, well, each to his own. <laughs> and so we decided to make it a meeting point. So people join for free, so anyone can look at the profiles. But if they want to message someone else, it's sort of like a dating site, and they have to pay to join. But it's very, it's £24 for three months, which if you think of uh, most places where you have to pay, it's 29 99 35 quid for a month. So we're not too bad, we're not too expensive. So that's how it works. That cuts out the weirdos, and the fishes and the spiders and all the rest of it. And it also, we get people who really are serious about contacting other people. And we've only had one strange person in seven and a half years. It's not bad. That is fantastic. Yeah. For the internet, that is fantastic. I know, yeah. <laughs> we, after about two years, I started moderating. Because <coughs> we had people putting inappropriate words in or sending contact details on the actual profile yeah, that the public could see. And that would go out, and by the time I came home from my normal day job, I'd, you know, this person sent their details out everywhere. So now we're moderating everything. The thing I want is for us not to have to make a program like this. So we don't want to think asexuality is weird, or celibacy is weird, or platonicity is weird. We want people to just get on with their sexual lives and not have to do things about it.
I don't even market the website. It does it all by itself. It's so the most impressive thing about it. If I marketed it, oh, if yeah. I got down and did some advertising or went on forums and said, hey guys, here we are, I'd, go, I'd have a lot more. But we've got nearly 7,000 members without that. And I hope this year to spread it a bit more. People have written to me, they've phoned me, they've emailed me saying thank goodness for your website. I have felt weird. One lady rang me up in tears because she, she'd been a sexual person. She had surgery, um, um, gynecological surgery, which completely ruined that part of her life. And she just shut herself away. And now she's been on the site, she's met someone, they've gone off happily. It's an integral, integral part of our being. Mm -hmm. It's something like, oh God, I'm really thirsty, I'll have a drink. It's an urge that comes up in our body. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can stop. Yeah. So if that goes and you've been used to it as part of, I would imagine it must feel like being able to see in colour and then everything goes black and white. It's the nuance of life, it's part of life, it's, it's part of who we are. I mean, DNA repeats itself, the selfish gene. So if that part of you goes... Can we do the selfish gene part again? Sorry, yeah, that was okay. really good. Uh, what was the question? Well, that you, you were saying that... It... If somebody loses their sexuality, it's like losing an in, in te integral part of yourself. I mean, if you're thirsty, you drink, if you're hungry, you eat. And we have that urge coming up in this. It's, it's part of who we are as, as beings. Um, if you think of the selfish gene, DNA trying to replicate itself through us, it, it's something that if, unless you're asexual, or you don't have libido, it, it's part of a human being, it's who we are. Just look around at the media. You, you blame the media fully? Do I blame the media fully? <clears throat> I blame the media in one way for telling us we have to be like this or that or the other but also I don't think the media has educated us enough I don't think the education system has educated us enough to believe we can have inner values and we can have beautiful physical contact without it being sexual so this it's like a double-edged sword the media it could give us more and it gives us too much rubbish crap nonsense so I don't blame it completely I don't know where I would lay the blame I think the blames very many stranded I mean in some countries it's okay to be celibate Buddhist countries for example. so would you say that it's not something that's, that's rooted in human nature well, now we're looking at, that, that's kind of a different issue, because if we look at the 1% of the world population who is asexual, that is their human nature. So that's rooted in their human nature. People who have libido, I think it becomes a choice. People who've had unhappy relationships or who've been abused in childhood, people who may have been hit as a child, find touch a little bit, please don't touch me. Touch is not good for them, so they're looking for comfort. I think we're all looking for comfort, for ease. So if physicality is challenging, one can understand why a person might decide to say, no, I don't want to go down that touchy, touchy feely place. It's not, it's not safe for me. So I think if you ask me for an underlying thread that could join all the reasons up, and I think it would be something to do with comfort and ease of being. I make the choice, I make the choice because I've had a very full life. I've travelled around a lot, done a lot of things. Um, I wanted to set the website up. I wanted to do a degree, another degree. I wanted to do a bodywork training. I moved house. <laughs> There was so much going on, I'd reach menopause and instead of thinking, oh, this is the end of life, it, uh, my energies were all still there, but suddenly I became more creative. Uh, yeah, lucky me. <laughs> I know. And I thought, 
I'm going to give it a rest for a while. And I said a year actually originally. Mm -hmm. Then it became two years, and I was meeting all these lovely sober people and platonic people, and my life was being so enriched by the quality of contact with them when there was no sexual agenda, mm. and it's just gone on from there. Somehow my, my quality of life and my connection with people deepened. Okay, you don't always eat food when you see it on a plate, do you? So you don't always want sex if you see it, or the opportunities there. When one becomes a bit more discerning. I think. Yes, no. They've said um, I'm more vibrant, more curious. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing more. You know, getting involved in more, mm -hmm. producing more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Taking risks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's kind of stepping out of traditional role playing in a way. I don't make a thing of it. If people ask me, I tell them. If if they don't, I don't yeah. mention it. Yeah, yeah. And do you think that'll ever change? Do you think you'll be, you know, once once you start stepping up, more kind of getting people to be aware? Do you think you would turn yourself into sort of a, a, a poster boy in any way? Do you ever consider that? No. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. This is a very interesting question, actually. I've been thinking about it lately. Um, if I were to meet somebody, because the media loves a figurehead. I know, mm -hmm. and I hate being mm -hmm. in the in the, the centre of attention. I, I kind of, I know, I'm kind of hamming it up a bit. You know? Oh no, no, no! I hate it. I hate it. I don't know. That's a very good question. Um, I could be okay doing that, but also I could meet someone and become non-celibate. In which case, what would happen to it? Mm -hmm. I can't go out lying and yeah. saying I'm celibate when I'm not anymore. Restricts you. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm just kind of sitting. I sit on the fence a lot. Gosh, I'd like to die knowing um, I shoved into that however many years it was as much as I could. I'd, I'd like to leave behind friends who knew me and could say something like, she loved well. I would, I would say two or three things to them. I would say, get some support. Go on to Avon, look on our website, go to your local shack clinic, sex, sexual health clinic, because they also have leaflets and things. That's the first thing I'd say. Find someone to support you. Honour yourself. It's absolutely fine to be like that. It's fine not to want sex. Once you've found out why you like that and you feel okay about it, you'll start to develop the confidence to not care about what the rest of the world is doing. But I would say, above all, honour yourself. Yeah, it's okay to say no. Okay. Yeah. And the third one? Don't judge yourself and think you're weird. I'd like to thank you for the way you're doing this. Because I've done, in the last seven years, I've done a huge you're amount of interviewing. If anything, it's making up for the, all the bad interviews that you've had in a small way, I hope. The Trisha show. Yeah, was that? Trisha telling me you must be absolutely weird if you're if you're Trisha. saying, but what's wrong with you? Have you had a weird childhood? Not oh, Trisha, sorry. I'm sorry. First big, on the big Daily Mail. Vanessa. 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 Vanessa Hudson or whatever Vanessa her name Feltz, is. Vanessa Feltz, is it? Yeah, I hate her. She told you you were weird. And also I went on the right stuff. Yeah. With what's his name? Yeah, yeah. He said I was weird. And what you're doing is normalising. And it, it just has to happen. It's a paradigm doing is shift. Exactly, it's a paradigm shift. Mm. You know, um, 20 years ago, aromatherapy was weird. Now you find it everywhere. Okay. 18 years, 15 years ago, I was practicing mindfulness and brought it into my psychotherapeutic um, circle of friends with other therapists. They thought it was weird. Now, everywhere you go, there's mindfulness. Try and do as much as you can to put this out there as being normal. Mm. And and doing interviews with people not in that way that journalism does oh we want to find about their everyday life what do they do instead you know do they go into the bathroom or go to bed when they're feeling their libido no you know so what yeah. it doesn't matter what people yeah. do be it out there as well how normal. they think how they see exactly yeah. what are their values mm. we need to get to some inner values 